everyone. Welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm Ashley Smith. In this episode, Ben Greenfield and Dr. Pampa discuss the top performance tips that Ben is implementing now to build and maintain muscle. Ben walks us through his typical day, from his sleep schedule to what foods he is eating and when. We'll hear the new devices he's using, what metrics he loves tracking, and which products he's especially loving now. We'll also hear how he balances life and work, mitigates stress, and how he gets his own kids to eat, live, sleep, and perform like their dad. This lively conversation does not disappoint. So grab a pen and notebook because there are some amazing tips in here that Ben will be sharing with you today. Before we get started, I'd like to share a bit more about Ben Greenfield. Ben is an author, speaker, coach, podcaster, and founder and CEO of Keon, where Ben creates step-by-step -step solutions from supplements and fitness gear to coaching and consulting to education and media for the world's hard-charging high achievers to live a truly limitless life with fully optimized minds, bodies, and spirits. Whether you want to become the complete mental athlete with a flawless brain and nervous system, attain an ideal human body that fires on all cylinders from performance to beauty to hormones and beyond, or achieve true and lasting health, happiness, and longevity, Ben combines intense time in the trenches with ancestral wisdom and modern science to make your dreams a reality. And to the health practitioners who are listening today, in this episode, you'll hear about the Live It to Lead It event hosted by Dr. Pampa, in which Ben Greenfield will be a featured speaker this November in Las Vegas. We'd love it if you would join us. For more information, please go to hcfevents.com and you can use the code CHTV to take $200 off the ticket price. That's hcfevents.com, promo code CHTV. You can also find this link in our show notes. This is open to all health practitioners and we'd love to see you there. Now let's get started and welcome Dr. Pampa and our friend Ben Greenfield to the show. This is Cellular Healing TV. Ben, welcome to Cell TV, man. You are uh, someone who I just love and adore. So I am excited for today's show. Thank you. That's kind of creepy, actually. But, um, <laughs> All right, so it. I love and adore you and your wife. It's yeah, like, oh, just don't, don't hang here. my come poster on your ceiling oh. or anything like that. <laughs> she doesn't want to come. I'm like, come on, come on. Darn, I had her. I had her. So yeah. Jessa was there. Anyways, uh, yeah. oh, you mean you mean in my office just now? That oh, actually, Jessa wasn't. just walked in the room. No, that that wasn't Jessa that just walked through. That my my basement flooded a couple days ago, oh. and so we're doing like a remediation analysis or whatever for for insurance. It looked like her, man. I mean, I'm yeah. telling you, it looked like her. But I, again, she was across the room, so I saw the back nah. of someone's head. Now, ra random women just walk into my office all day long. It's <laughs> weird. It's creepy. Well, anyways, yeah. See, yeah, that that, that that did look like her. I saw the back of her again right there. But anyways, yeah. now listen, now we, we, we love you guys. When you come to Park City, you know, you, you stay with us. And uh, we just we just got to be really good friends. And, you know, and, and Ben, I'll have to stay. I want, I want my viewers and listeners just to, to know a little bit about who you are. So I'm, I'm going to start here, okay? We, there was a, who was, came to your house to interview you? I forget what it was for. It was for some type of documentary or some type of piece. You, oh, jeez. You know what? I, what, what, what was the context? It was the one where Jessa was actually interviewed at the end, right? There was your oh, Okay, tape. yeah, that, that, that was um, Men's Health Magazine. They did okay. something called the, Down the Stem Cell Rabbit Hole because I got my dick injected with stem cells <laughs> and they wanted to do like a follow-up story on that and all these kind of like male sexual enhancement procedures that Men's Health sent me on this three-month foray to do. So they sent a film crew to my house and they're tracking me all over the house, you know, shining laser lights on my balls and, and doing all these crazy things. They even had me order up stem cells and, and inject them intravenously to just show somebody kind of like doing this at home. And uh, then they interviewed my wife, you know, after they show me. Well, yeah, so uh, they, they showed you doing all your things, right? You wake up yeah, in the morning. All this crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and we're going to, I'm going to have you tell them what your day looks like, right? So it's this arduous thing, right? So they get to your wife and they say, well, you know, basically go ahead, take it from there. So after they see you doing all these things throughout the day, they ask your wife a question. 
uh, I forget what well, well, it, it, it was. It was something along the lines of like, dude, are you, are you referring to uh, Dan? Like, do you do any of this stuff? Like, yeah, right. How, so yeah. what do you do? Do you do all this stuff? And her comment it was, are you kidding me? I can't even imagine waking That's up right. every yeah. day with a list, you know, you know, hot, cold injections. Da-da. She's the complete opposite. Opposite. She she lays down in bed and just goes to sleep. Uh, you know she doesn't work as she plays tennis every now and again. Um, she's super. T- sometimes sometimes she'll just like not eat all day, and I'll be like, "Oh, are you fasting? Like, are you doing a fasting protocol?" And she's like, "No, I just didn't eat yet." <laughs> like, like she doesn't plan anything right she just kind of randomly stays mm-hmm. healthy with zero planning at all and you know she's also the type of person who if you send her an email she might read like 20 percent of the emails in her inbox and she's got like 200 unread messages on her phone and you know that's her she's typing right. I'm, that's I'm the just it. and my I'm wife like, just like they fell in love there's like one you. there's like one box or i haven't checked it's like that needs to be taken care of before i'm gonna like sit down to lunch or anything like that and she's the total opposite. And I'm glad because I've hung out before with, you know, not to sound judgmental, God loves everybody, but I've hung out with like, you know, couples who are Ironman triathletes or couples who are CrossFitters or couples who are, you know, biohackers. And I'm like, it would drive me nuts if Jessa was the same as me. So yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Right. Merrily brings balance to me as well. Okay. Yeah. So she is the exact opposite. So let's look at Ben Greenfield. Okay, Ben, tell them your day. You get up in the morning, go. Oh, you want to go through my day? Okay. Oh, yeah. I um, so I, I typically wake up and I do gratitude journaling. I, I write down one thing I'm grateful for, one person who I can pray or help or serve that day. And then one truth that I discovered in the morning's devotional reading or scripture. And while I do that, I measure my sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system mm-hmm. using a uh, heart rate variability app called nature beat. And then I also do a quick review of my sleep core scores with, uh, with this ring, the, mm-hmm. the aura ring. And then I, uh, I go downstairs and I get the water for the coffee started up. Um, typically I turn off all my sleep stuff. So I sleep with like, I sleep on a body balance or, or a bio balance PEMF mat, uh, which is covered with a chili pad, which actually seems to increase the strength that pulsed electromagnetic field. And then uh, I turn off my essential oil diffuser because I diffuse lavender while I'm asleep. And and what, I, what are you diffusing right there? You're diffusing something right now. Oh, you can see it. Uh, yeah. This one is uh, that's rosemary. Okay. I, I actually, I keep rosemary, uh, peppermint, and cinnamon as the three primary essential oils in my office. But I have, so I have this, this assistant who lives in my house and just kind of helps out with lots of stuff. And I, I just have her surprise me. I tell her, hey, the only rule is keep them full, but the bedroom has to have the relaxing ones and the, the, uh, the office has to have the stimulating ones. So, uh, so anyways, I, I, and then I turn off the binaural beats because I use binaural beats while I'm asleep as well. And once I shut down all that stuff, I, I get out of bed, I head downstairs and uh, while well, the, well, the coffee water is on, I do about 15 minutes of self-care. So it gives me a lot of momentum going into the day and I kind of live the day in a state of low level physical activity. And I like to just start off by stretching everything out, foam rolling, anything that's sore. Sometimes I hang from a yoga trapeze or an inversion table. I have like a Peticon neck traction device. So I'll pop I've seen you doing coffee enemas upside down from your trapeze. I mean, you know, yeah, it's yeah. that's actually with the trapeze. Usually if you see me hanging from the trapeze, it's a probiotic enema. So I do a probiotic enema about once a month. I do a coffee enema once a week, but that probiotic enema uh, kind of seeds the colon better if you hang upside down for a while. Whereas the coffee enema is better just laying on your right side for okay. about 20 minutes or so. Stop right so. there. Where yeah. can people find these? Because people are going, I want to do that. I want to do that. Where do they find that stuff, Ben? Uh, honestly, uh, I, I blog about it pretty intensively over at bengreenfieldfitness.com. So there you go, bengreenfieldfitness.com. Yeah, so, okay, continue. Yeah. So, so the you know the morning routine, as you've just alluded to, kind of varies because there are certain, like every Wednesday morning, for example, uh, rather than doing the foam rolling or the you know the self body care and massage. I instead do uh, rebounding and a bunch of charcoal and uh, coffee enema and then a sauna, right? So I have like a a weekly kind of like mini detox that I do all year long Mm -hmm. to kind of clean up the body. And you use Cyto Detox as well. 
Yeah, I use Cyto Detox, but I space that from the charcoal. So on a morning like that, I'll get up, take Cyto Detox, and then it'll be like an hour and a half or so. Then I take the charcoal as a binder, and then I go and do a, a coffee enema, and then I'll I'll go in the sauna after that. That's how that's how a typical like detox morning would look like for me. And I'm not completely unproductive during that time. You know, if I'm laying on my right side doing a coffee enema, I'll be you know dicking around my phone or playing emails oh, or doing all that as I try and stay productive when I do this stuff. Uh, anyways, though, so I do the uh, I I do all the self body care while the coffee's on, and then I grab my coffee. I go down to my office and I spend about the first twenty to thirty minutes of my day writing because. For, for me, as, as, a, as an author, and I say author because I, I sometimes feel like a true author should be writing all day, and instead for me, it's like I write for 20 to 30 minutes a day because that's all the time I have by the yeah. time I've got podcasts and travel and speaking and everything else going on. So I, while I'm writing, I'll typically have this on doing, uh, doing photo biomodulation. That's the which, Juve light, which I've done shows on, but why, yeah. why do you do that? Tell them why you do that. Red and near infrared light for activation of the cytochrome C oxidase and mitochondria for release of nitric oxide uh, for a little bit of collagen and skin health. I even, like I alluded to earlier, you know, I pull down my pants and I, I shine on my testicles to activate the Leydig cells in the test. I did it this morning. <laughs> yeah, I did sperm it this morning. for testosterone is really good for that. So uh, I also, while I am in my office in the morning, because I travel pretty intensively. I usually will also use light therapy. Like I'll put in the human charger. I'll put on uh, glasses like this, like the um, the retimer glasses that you can you can flip on and kind of shine green blue light at the eyes. Mm -hmm. And then I also have something called a Violite, which is kind of more targeted photobiomodulation. It looks like this. It's like a like mm -hmm. a light panel for your skull. And uh, I'll wear that about every 48 in hours. Interview men's health uh, thing, the piece they did. You had that on your head. You were on the bike. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll typically I do a lot of light therapy while I'm drinking my coffee and while I'm writing. Um, the other thing that I'll use, and you can't see it here, but I have something called a Nano V next to my desk here, and it's like a tube. I could probably get the tube up here so you can at least see that. It's basically like a nasal cannula. Right, and this this generates a small amount of reactive oxygen species, and you know what that what that does is it's like mild hormesis. It enhances cellular resilience, steps up DNA repair a little bit, and I'll often have that in in the morning as well. So I just so kind of hook myself up too much. This, just in a very quick brief thing, why do you do all this light therapy? Like, what, what are the you had to say? Here's some quick. Well, benefits. yeah, my, mitochondrial health, nitric oxide release. Um, activation of, of cytochrome C oxidase, which is, which is basically related to mitochondrial health, collagen, skin, uh, blood flow to the brain. Uh, there, there's some effect on thyroid tissue. Uh, there's even some effect on maintenance of muscle, um, some effect on lipolysis. There's like a mild detoxification effect as tissue is heated. There's just a variety of benefits. And I, I just can't go out in the sunshine to work on my computer and write and stuff in the morning. Uh, and honestly, the, the thing about red and near infrared light and some of these more targeted forms of photobiomodulation is you're, you're really taking a lot of the positive aspects of sunlight that you'd be looking for anyways, if you were to go out in the sun and you're concentrating them in higher doses so that you're getting more of that in a shorter period of time. So it would be, there's a lot of things I don't consider to be biohacking. Like I, I don't consider like putting butter in, in your smoothie or um, let's say what would, what would be another example of, of you know, or, or taking ketones or something like that to be a biohack. I consider that to be just like cooking and eating, mm -hmm. but I do consider anything that like shortcuts a natural biological reaction that you're going after to be a, a biohack. So like mm -hmm. photobiomodulation I would consider to be you know, basically morning biohacking. So that's if, if one, if one of all the light things that you use that our viewers, you would think that everyone would benefit from, which one would it be? It depends, but I would say if you're somebody who's on the go a lot, um, I would just get like a Juve mini because you can travel with it. You get red and for you get red light, you get near and for red light. Um, the Violite, the one for your head, I like, but it doesn't really target the rest of the body at all. Whereas the Juve Mini, you could use that on your genitals, you could use it on your face, you could use it um, on your eyes. It's great for the retina. So there, there's a lot of benefits and it's portable. 
my and kids that, have. Actually, we'll, we'll make sure, folks, we put that in the show notes that you can access one of those, what Ben's talking about. Yeah, my, my kids have the Juve Mini up in their bedroom. That's kind of cute. They have, a bio, they have a mini biomat and a mini Juve. So they get a bunch of infrared. They get a bunch of negative ions. They get their, their near-infrared and red light. So they're, they're kind of on board with a lot of this stuff that, that mm -hmm. I do as well. They have their little essential oil diffuser. So Yeah, yeah, you're, that's great. They, they're, they're healthy, healthy young kids. They, they sleep amazingly, and they have really good scores at school, and they're, they're just really emotionally stable. And I think part of it is because they, they have good mitochondrial health yeah, and they take care of their brain and their, and their bodies. So, well, and, the, and the way they eat, I mean, you, you all practice what you preach just like Marilee and I. So, yeah. okay, we're, we're like partway through the day. And folks, I'm telling you, this is what Ben does every day. I, I'm telling no, you. No, we're not partway through the day. We're at like 730 in the morning. Right, we got to speed so, it up, man. So, yeah, we should speed it up. So, anyways, I am a firm believer in activation of the parasympathetic nervous system in the morning. Unless you're so busy and you're traveling and your only chance to – get like a hard workout in if you really are trying to say like build muscle or you're trying let's say you've signed up for a marathon or an Ironman or a Spartan race or something like that yeah sometimes you have to do an unnatural amount of physical exercise meaning whereas our ancestors wouldn't have necessarily done like a like a wad you know sometimes if you are wanting to train or you are wanting to put on muscle or you are I mean even for me personally like I for some of my workouts push myself harder than what I know to be good for my body. Like I cross that yeah. threshold of a little bit of excess oxidation and a little bit of pushing myself too hard. And even my body fat is probably about three to 5% lower than what I consider to be naturally healthy for ultimate fertility and longevity and cell membrane health, et cetera. However, I also understand that in the industry that I'm in, in the health and fitness and nutrition industry, a lot of times you are judged by how you look with your shirt off or, um, or, or, or how fast you go in a Spartan race or something like that. So I actually, you know, I, I, I do a hard workout typically at the end of the day, and I don't think that's necessary for health. I think that's more of like either performance thing or if you're like me and kind of part of your paycheck depends on just like, you know, uh, and, and I don't want to sound like narcissistic or something, but like ripping your shirt off for a photo shoot or something like that. Like I actually have to kind of well, maintain world. muscle. Yeah, yeah my, my world. Yeah, it's kind of world. my, you know, you, it's kind of my shtick, right? I still, I still operate in an environment where I'm judged by my body. And so I, I accept that and I still kind of, kind of push myself with a hard workout, but I don't do that at the beginning of the day. Typically I do something easy at the beginning of the day because you already have a natural cortisol release coffee amps that up even more. So typically for me, I will do a sauna, a walk in the sunshine. I love cold water swims and we live near the Spokane river. Sometimes I'll go down there and toss the paddleboard in the water for about 20 minutes, and then jump in and just tread water in the cold for five, 10 minutes. So I kind of like to ease into the day with physical activity. And that's typically uh, after I've had my coffee and kind of done my writing and my, my light therapy, um, after I've taken my, my morning dump and, uh, th then I go off and I do about 20 to 30 minutes of light physical activity. And at that point I start my day, uh, meaning that I, I really jump into work intensively. I'm a firm believer in this idea of deep work and the concept that you can typically engage in about four to five hours of deep focus work each day. So from about 9 30 or 10 AM, until about 2 p.m. I work really hard. I'll do interviews like we're doing right now. I do a lot of uh, a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of you know additional writing. Typically not in my book, which is all the morning stuff, but like articles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, any anything that involves deep focused work. I save yeah. a lot of my email responses and stuff like that for my more reactive time, which is typically the afternoon or the early evening. I do I just, the same thing. Yeah, so I do deep work. Uh, and, uh, if I've had a very physically active evening the night prior, or, uh, meaning I've done like a hard workout, like a, like a glycogen depleting weight training workout the night prior, or I've, I have already anticipated a very busy day and I've done a hard workout that morning, I'll have breakfast. Like I, and typically for me, it's just like a, a smoothie. I eat low otherwise, to no carbohydrate. Otherwise you fast, you intermittent fast. 
Uh, I fast or I do like I do right now, typically uh, a little bit of ketones, ketone salts or ketone esters and amino acids. Like nine times out of 10, if I'm not eating breakfast, like I didn't do this morning, I will just be on amino acids and ketones. Yeah, because and me, that again, me- we, have, we have different goals. You're, you're, you live in the fitness world. Me, I don't do amino acids because I want to keep my atop right. you maximized. And there's, there's a room for both. Right. Because we're going to talk I've, about I've, why I've tried must- both. And I can do fine with just like water and minerals for morning fast. But what happens is once I do jump in to that hard workout, because I'm still training and racing as a professional athlete, for me to throw down a workout, which is typically going to occur between about 5 and 7 p.m. or so in the later afternoon or the early evening, if I completely skip breakfast, even if I've had lunch, that workout is, is not as good. My performance is not as good later on in the day. It does take about eight hours or so for some glycogen restoration to occur for restoration of things like uh, acetylcholine and some neurotransmitters that get exhausted during exercise to replenish, for ATP to replenish, for creatine phosphate to replenish. And hard charging athletes who skip breakfast but don't perhaps replace some of the precursors that they need for exercise in the morning tend to not have as good yeah. of a workout. The demands, the uh, when you train yeah. at the level you train at, the demands are so high, yeah. it, right? It's abnormal. Therefore, you need more of yeah. these precursors. So I agree. Hence why I'll at least use amino acids mm-hmm. and ketones. Uh, so I work all day. Then typically around two, take a break, have some lunch. Uh, for me, it's usually like a big salad. While I'm working, I'm doing things like you're seeing me do now, you know, walking on my treadmill, doing dictation. I'll stop every once in a while. I'll do some kettlebell swings or I'll go outside and ground or earth or get a little sunlight. Uh, you know, typically I'll, I'll turn on my phone during those Pomodoro breaks. And while I'm outside, listen to any Voxers or make sure there's no fires I need to put out and go back in and jump back into my, my deep work. And, uh, after I have lunch, I take a nap. I'm a big believer in naps, especially for athletes. Um, it like, it almost like gives me two days. Like, like I wake up and I'm just ready to charge into this, this extra day I've created for myself versus kind of slogging through the latter half of the day, a little bit depleted from all that hard work I did in the morning. So I take a nap. Typically I take a nap on a bio mat. So I'm getting my a little bit more infrared and some negative ions from from the amethyst and the tourmaline crystals that are in the biomat and i wear these normatec gradated compression boots that basically yeah, compress your legs they're amazing they are. and I, I i pull those on i put on some essential oil and i just crash out for like 20 to 45 minutes really helpful Occasionally, I'll use uh, audiovisual entrainment. For example, I have like a Mind Alive David D. Light Pro that you can use to kind of lull yourself into a pretty deep state of delta relaxation. Um, and, and I find that that enhances the nap even more. It even has like cranial electrical stimulation on it that will allow for a little decrease in cortisol. There's sometimes another similar I'll device. I'll nap in the afternoon. Like sometimes I'll even just lay yeah. on my and, and fall completely asleep putting myself in right. that sympathetic mode. I play um, the uh, whole tunes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whole tunes by, by Michael Tyrell. Those yep. are amazing. As a I matter a of fact, on, I did a show on, I interviewed him. Ashley, um, my, yeah. my team will put that up folks, but yeah. So it, but it does what you're saying. I mean, it just puts you in that Delta deep sleep. You can get 15, 20 minutes and you play the whole tones and uh, yeah, you can watch right. that. So. Wednesdays are my big kind of like self love day. So I start off the day with that detoxification protocol that I talked about. I skip my nap on Wednesdays for this reason. It's related to this whole tones thing because at about eight 30 on Wednesday nights, I have a massage therapist come over to my house and I lay on this giant pulsed electromagnetic field mat uh, made by a company called Pulse centers that I keep mm. in my basement and it's sandwiched on either side by these speakers. So I blast myself with sound therapy uh, using usually Michael Tyrell's whole tones or his love life and lullabies tracks and do the PEMF and she works on me and it ju- it's just like a full body reboot between that and the morning, like sauna enema routine. Um, you know, Wednesdays is just like I push the reboot button on the body every single Wednesday. So mm-hmm. anyways, uh, the, after, after my lunchtime nap, I get up, I do, my kids get home from school about four. So that gives me time to do about another hour and a half of like emails and responsive work. When the kids get home, typically I am, I'm with them 
Um, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in this idea that even though it can be smart to outsource your child's education to people who can do a better job at teaching them specific skills than you might be able to, uh, and I also think that at school, they can learn how to play well with others. They can learn how to do well in group environments. They can learn to cooperate. I was homeschooled K through 12. I still have a little bit of a weakness in terms of group cooperation, in terms of following versus <laughs> always needing to lead, kind of like that lone wolf mentality. Yeah. And I would rather my kids kind of get the best of both worlds, be able to learn and operate in group environments, but then also be able to function independently as resilient, free thinking young men. So because of that, when they get home from school, typically that's the time when we're delving into, you know, me bringing them to jujitsu or us going out and shooting arrows or doing plant foraging or learning skills that they would not learn at school. We do meditation sit spots. We do, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll play tennis. We just all these little kind of like independent things that I want them to learn from me. I'll typically spend time doing with them when they get home from school. And then like I mentioned, sometime between 5 and 7 p.m., I jump into an evening workout. That's usually about 40 to 60 minutes long. Uh, you know, some strength, some cardio, some hit, et cetera. It all depends. And then once, once that workout is over, I... I'll usually fast for a good hour and a half. We eat dinner kind of late. I don't think that that's ideal for circadian rhythm. It's just the way our days work. So yeah. we usually don't eat dinner till about 8.30. So I'm usually done working out around 7. Research shows that if you finish a hard workout at least three hours before bedtime, and we typically go to bed about 10, you, you have enhanced deep sleep levels. So I try to finish up my workout by 7. Uh, I will sometimes have a digestee for a bitter or some form of alcohol. Uh, after the workout just because my liver glycogen is depleted and so that fructose just tends to go towards liver glycogen restoration rather than spilling over as triglycerides into the bloodstream so if I'm going to have alcohol or a drink I actually have it uh, post-workout you know if I let's say I finish working around 7 by 7 30 I'm down in my office and I'm I'm having a little drink and I'm going through like the last emails of the day and then typically our family will eat around 8 or 8.30, that's when, if I'm gonna eat any carbohydrates, I don't, eat, I don't eat any carbohydrates at all the entire day. And at the very end of the day, I will replenish muscle glycogen and liver glycogen with a drink and typically some kind of carbohydrate with dinner, whether that's sweet potatoes or yams or rice yeah, or whatever. What I, think. I, I agree, I, if my afternoon meal, I, don't, I mm -hmm. eat uh, protein and fat, and then my yeah. evening meal is where I'll, I'll eat my yeah. I, I eat a lot of plant. We have a huge garden and I go out there for lunch and just pick kale and Swiss chard and carrots. And yeah, yeah I like, you know, I mean, a lot I, of plants I and herbs and spices. People, some people do it the opposite. I, I find it just works better for me for sure. I like to burn my glycogen out through the day and then replace Yeah. It. And you also get a big serotonin release at the end of the day. So you sleep better. I think I um, tend to sleep better. And, and folks, how we know that is that aura ring. You know, we can, you can measure your sleep to see really how you get better in deep sleep. So, you know, I, I find the same as Ben. All right, so that is Ben Greenfield, man. I mean, you, you heard it. I, I'm not kidding. So when they did, came and did the interview, they literally made him look like a lunatic because he does all these things. And then there's Jessa at the end going, are you kidding me? Who could do that? Like you heard. <laughs> so but I mean, her, her day too, like she's pushing a wheelbarrow around in the garden, gardening, weeding, carrying rocks, carrying alfalfa down to our goats, like – Oh, yeah, whole day. She's, she's just like outside grounded earthed in the sunlight mm -hmm. and uh, she really admittedly she lives a more natural ancestral lifestyle than I do based on all of that and so you know whereas I'm working as an author a blogger a podcaster fighting this constant uphill battle against the EMF and the radiation I get when I'm flying uh, and, and so even though we've got our whole house kind of hardwired with Ethernet, so there's no Wi-Fi, we've done a lot of EMF mitigation. We've done a lot of light mitigation strategies. Uh, we've got a really good water setup, et cetera. With the amount of travel I do, I still have to have to be pretty careful to, to a certain extent, kind of use these hacks to keep uh -huh. myself healthy. And I also don't want to sound like a, like a wounded healer or something, but I've, I've done some pretty extensive genetic testing. And, you know, I don't produce a lot of superoxide dismutase. I don't uh, produce a lot of, of vitamin D, even in response to sunlight. I'm an APO E3-4. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of little genetic things going on that 
require me to pay a little bit closer attention to my health uh, compared to my wife who is basically she's genetically flawless her blood work is flawless she's got these like hard montana rancher genes she's, she's lucky right so she has I, I agree she she is flawless in every way i mean she is she's amazing i sort of say about my wife my wife's uh, cellular age is like she's a teenager you know i mean it's yeah. like I just got to keep up, man. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, there's, there's <laughs> that. And then you and I also have this responsibility to try a lot of this stuff, Absolutely. right? And, Absolutely. And, and, and to be kind of like first adopters of a lot of this yeah. technology and biohacks and health strategies. And I mean, I, I get people who just want to freaking, you know, know how to repopulate their colon with good flora and what a probiotic enema is. And sure, I could point them to some blog, you know, and but I, or I could go research and do it myself and just walk them through the whole process. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer of living your life in the trenches and not just writing about stuff or being some, you know, whatever that kid with a neck beard in your mom's basement writing about health. Like I want to be out there living it and trying yeah. this stuff out. No, nah, man, that's where you and I are the same. You know, it's like, I, I've just, I got to do it and then I got to talk about it. Right. It's like, and, and you know, Ben, you bring balance to me. I look at you and go, Oh, thank God I have balance, you know, cause everyone's like, you know, I do all these things, you know, I'm always researching, going, going. Then I see Ben and I'm like, Oh man, I'm balanced. My life's balanced, man. All right, now let, let's, I want to bring something here because uh, you know, I, I, I just so respect, uh, matter of fact, you're speaking at my seminar. Uh, you're speaking, we're, this seminar is about fasting. Uh, you've been doing many types of fasting for a long time like I have. And you're going to be bringing the exercise portion around the seminar because we're fasting these people. We're intermittent fasting them. And you're going to show them some exercises to do while they're fasting in the fasting state to maximize the hormones, their growth hormones. But I, I want, and this is probably part of that conversation, but many people, I said that people that are on my show, they're looking for their health. Um, we, you know, we do have exercise enthusiasts as well. But gaining muscle, we don't talk a lot about that because it's everyone wants to lose weight. But yet gaining muscle is a part of losing fat. Gaining muscle is a part of regaining health. Gaining muscle is a big deal for people who are really sick. And again, we already mentioned that there's some things that we need to do that are a little different uh, than some of the things that we talk about on the show to actually gain muscle. As a trained athlete, um, you, need, you need to do these things, right? So let's bring it to a health perspective. What are some tips on how we gain muscle, even just for health and perhaps performance? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the caveat here is that we know that muscle takes energy to carry. It takes energy to cool. It requires a higher amount of endogenous antioxidant production. And uh, even when present in large amounts, especially in people like bodybuilders, is associated with things like cardiomegaly or left ventricular hypertrophy or health issues that, That's that the basically can decrease uh, the, both the quality and the quantity of life. So getting more muscle is not the goal, but most of the research studies that are good that look on muscle – uh, primarily focus on the quality of the muscle, right. meaning the power to mass ratio, the mitochondrial density of the muscle, uh, the the um, the functional capacity of the muscle. So the idea is not to build more muscle per se, just to have added bulk, but rather to maintain muscle quality. And then also there are certain things that are directly correlated with longevity, such as uh, grip strength as a perfect example. Uh, the amount of weight that you can deadlift with a hex bar is another one that, that's a good example of a marker of longevity. So there are certain things that you can, you can certainly track versus just like, I want to put on as much muscle as possible. I mean, I mean look at me, like I'm not a big old muscular yeah. guy, but every shred of muscle that I have is very functional because that's the way yeah, that I train. I mean, folks, if you looked at Ben and I, right, it's like we're, we're lean, but our muscle is like rock hard when you touch us, right? I'm not the hypertrophy. We're not talking about the bodybuilder. Hypertrophy is not normal and right. it's not the same type of muscle, right? So this is what we're right. talking about. Which I used to do, by the way. I, was, I used to weigh 215 pounds. To put that in perspective for you, I'm 175 pounds now. I was 215 pounds, 3% body fat. Right now I'm 175 pounds, about 7 to 8% body fat. Mm -hmm. But that was because I was a competitive bodybuilder. And I would eat anywhere from 6,000 to 8,000 calories a day. I would spend about two hours a day in the gym doing a, a lot of different types and, of lifts. And by the way, folks, you will die early putting that many calories in that much protein. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
kind of funny. You'd go to these bodybuilding shows and people look like Adonis is from a distance. Then you get up close and they're just inflammatory firestorms and they look like the grandma from something about Mary as far as their skin quality. And you hop on an elevator in these Vegas bodybuilding shows and the elevator just smells like ass because everybody's just chock full of whey protein and energy bars and, and nice. all this fermentation and SIBO. And it's, it's nasty, nasty, fast, fast track to an early death, even though you might look good with your shirt off. Uh, anyways, though, so as far as, as building and or maintaining muscle, there is this concept of the minimal effective dose of exercise. And I'm a big fan of that, especially for people who aren't trying to put on muscle or maintain muscle for the purposes of athletic competition, but instead for the purposes of health and longevity. So some of the programs that I really like for this, uh, number one would be this concept of super slow training. Uh, super slow training can not only produce a really good cardiovascular response uh, so that you are getting all the cardio benefits of exercise while at the same time you're weight training, but it's really good at maintaining or building muscle with a decreased risk of injury. Probably That's one of the So what do you mean by slow? Like you, the, how you move a rep? Yeah. Slow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you read a book like Doug McGuff's Body by Science, uh, one to two times a week, you train for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes using uh, primarily five different exercises, some kind of a chest press, some kind of a shoulder press, some kind of a seated row, some kind of a pull down, and some kind of a leg press. This is typically how I work out when I travel because there's a very low amount of cognitive willpower or complexity to a routine like this. And I can do it with either free weights or ideally with weight machines in a very controlled environment in just about any gym or health club or hotel on yeah, the face and of the anyone planet. listening and can do it. It's actually a safer way to move. So, okay, tell us it's, how, it's, how it's, you do it. It's tell quite me. simple. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's single set to failure. So, for example, you would start with the chest press and you would go about 20 to 30 seconds up, 20 to 30 seconds back. So we're moving, you know, if you were watching the video right now, it's really slow and you're trying to breathe through your nose, kind of like this deep meditative style breathing. As you get towards the end of the set and a lot of lactic acid builds up, you'll start to breathe through your mouth. You'll feel your heart rate go through the roof. Your blood pressure will increase. And by the time you finish that one single set, you just feel exhausted. And then you move on to the pull down. Then you move on to the shoulder press. Got it. Then you, you move on to the row. Down. And then, and then you finish with the leg press, right? Yeah. So you have chest press, pull down. I like to alternate between the pushing and the pulling, right? Shoulder press and then seated row and then leg press. And the modification that I make for a lot of people who want to kind of get a little bit more of a cardio stimulus is you'll finish that whole routine, which is going to take you about 12 to 15 minutes or so. And then you throw in about two minutes of cardio, like an air assault bike or rowing machine or anything like that at the very end of that set. And for my, my more advanced athletes or exercise enthusiasts, we'll do, we'll, we'll do like two or three rounds of that, even yeah. though one, is the minimal effective dose. So that type of routine, even if just done twice a week, is fantastic for I maintaining that. I love that because people listening, it's muscle. a good amount of time, right? And that, that would literally right. take 15 minutes, 10 minutes to do, right? I mean, right. Yeah. It's super quick. And you can also purchase exercise equipment for your home that makes this really easy. For example, there's a guy named John Jakish that makes the X3 bar, which are really high quality elastic bands, a very short bar that acts similar to like an Olympic weightlifting bar and a little platform. And you can simulate all these different weight training machines, but these elastic bands can be set at a, a pretty high intensity. So that you're, uh, you're, you're simulating hundreds of pounds with an elastic band. Um, there, there are also more advanced devices that are more expensive, but that have machines that kind of walk you through this. ARX Fit is an example of a company that makes these machines where it will kind of walk you through the super slow routine. And even as you're, like if you do a chest press and you press out really slow, yeah. rather than you just bringing the weight back, really so it pushes back against you right so there are all sorts of ways to, to kind of hack this so to speak how What's much that? are some of these home things i mean what, what do they cost oh well the x3 bar setup would be like 300 or 400 bucks an arx fit you're looking at at three to four grand so it, it kind of kind of depends right on on what you want 
Uh, ultimately, though, the only thing that, in my opinion, you miss out on when you're doing a routine like that is something that has been shown to increase longevity and to increase muscle quality, and that would be the whole like explosive powerful type of movement. Uh, because, and, and it's my opinion that to maintain good functional fitness into your later years of life, especially, you can't neglect occasionally moving quickly. Yeah. And uh, honestly, one like of jumps, well, like jumps, like where instead of going really slow, jumps, and small, you're jumping, pops, moving quickly, doing the movements more explosively. Right. And because of that, what I tend to do with the folks who I'm trying to give the minimal effective dose of exercise for maintaining or building muscle or increasing the quality of the muscle, we'll do a workout like the one that I've just described twice a week, for example, on a Monday and a Friday. But then two more times a week, like a Wednesday and a Saturday, we'll do something like the seven-minute New York Times workout one or two times through. So we're talking about like seven to 14 minutes. And that involves 14 different exercises, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. You could just Google seven minute New York Times workout and you'd, okay. you'd see it. There's good research behind it. And you're just going 30 seconds, as many pushups as you can do, 10 mm -hmm. seconds off. 30 seconds, as many body weight squats as you can do, 10 seconds off. 30 seconds, as many lunge jumps as you can do, 10 seconds off. So on and so forth. And that works really well for kind of maintaining a little bit more of the explosive aspects of the muscle. Now, yeah. when, when I'm working with someone, I, I also like to pull out some of the things that have been shown to maintain muscle without stressing the body quite as much. Perfect example of that is heat stress, right? Like most of the people I work with, I typically have in a sauna anywhere from two to five times a week, not only because of the fantastic effect that that has on nitric oxide and blood flow and cardiovascular health, but also because of its ability to create a lot of these heat shock proteins and the type of cellular resilience that has been proven in research to allow for muscle maintenance in addition to things like red blood cell production. And so that's very simple. It works better if you do it post-exercise. What I like about the sauna is you, if you're big into like reading, self-education, magazine, stuff like that, you can just save all that for the sauna. If you like a yoga practice or you like to meditate or you like to do holotropic breath work, I mean, anything, you can just step into a sauna and do it. I'm a big fan of like an infrared sauna just mm -hmm. because it heats the tissue a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, you can get like lower EMF infrared saunas. You can also use a dry sauna at the gym. The steam sauna is just because you never know the source of the water. I'm a little bit more careful of. But ultimately, I think that a super slow routine combined with an explosive routine, and then you throw heat into the mix by frequently exposing yourself to the stressors of heat. That's a really good kind of one, two, three combo for muscle. Right. Uh, yeah. Like I mentioned, I'm also a big fan of cold just because you get conversion of your white adipose tissue into brown fat. There's not a lot of evidence that it's going to help to build muscle, but it pairs really well and works perfectly with the scenario that I've just described. And so in many cases, what I'll do is like a, a super slow routine, then some heat, and then finish up with a quick cold shower, a quick cold soap. That's exactly so what I it's exactly so I, I did my workout. Yeah. I went in the sauna. And I then went into a cold shower, you know, just boom, 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 one after the other. Right. And interestingly, if you fast for, we'll talk about this more at the conference, even just like fasting for, you know, an hour or two hours post-workout, you get an increase in growth hormone, Absolutely. You get an increase in testosterone, you get a pretty good fat loss effect. And despite popular culture and fitness telling you that you got to drop that bar from the last rep and rush off to suck down your whey protein and multi Yeah, we used to do that. I remember the old days. The old yeah. days we did that, Ben. 30 minutes, right? We had to get the protein the, in. We the learned the only we reason to do that would be if you're, you know, let's say you're a high school football player trying to put on 30 pounds yeah. or a bodybuilder like I used to be trying to put on copious amounts of muscle, uh, or you are doing a two-a-day, right? So it takes about eight hours for glycogen restoration to occur if you're eating ad libitum, kind of like according to appetite. But if you're going to exercise again, let's say you are an athlete and you're doing a two a day, you're in high school and you got a sport in the morning, sport in the evening, then it does actually pay off to eat post-workout because you get that, that liver and muscle glycogen replenishment occurring faster than that eight hour window. But unless you're going to work out again within eight hours or less, there's no reason to eat after the workout. And the advantages of not eating 
uh, seem to outweigh the the advantages of like face stuffing post workout. Yeah, yeah. And what about you know amino acids? You mentioned them. I mean that that can be a big help for people who need to put on muscle and um, you know promote yours. My kids take your amino acids. Uh, they swear yeah. by them. So. And I should clarify that leucine, isoleucine, and valine are the three amino acids that you're going to find in most amino acid supplements. Those are your branch chain amino acids. And unfortunately, um, and leucine in particular is a culprit for this, that can cause a high amount of glycemic variability and a larger release of insulin compared to what would be a more expensive solution but a more anabolic solution and also solution that's less likely to spike blood glucose because the balance of the amino acids. And that would be essential amino acids, which contain nine of the essential amino acids that the body can't make, including those branch chains, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, but combined with six other amino acids that and, allow- And that's what your product, your product has that balance. Main, you maintain an anabolic state without necessarily increasing blood glucose. So that's what I like to maintain blood levels of amino acids if you're gonna work out hard in a fasted state. The other cool thing is that when you have high blood levels of amino acids and you're doing a workout, especially a hard workout, those help to outcompete tryptophan from crossing the blood brain barrier. So they stave off some of the central nervous system fatigue that can occur, especially during a fasted workout. So for a variety of reasons, and especially for people who wanna maintain or build muscle, I am a fan of doing your workout in a fasted state, but if you want to have your cake and eat it too, so to speak, to use something like essential amino acids before or after or both so that you maintain high blood levels of amino acids without necessarily having to have all the calories of like whey protein or a steak or something mm -hmm. like that. So I first started to use these way back when I was doing Ironman triathlon. You know, I, uh, 2013, I started to go into a really deep ketosis. And, you know, as an endurance athlete, I really wanted to figure out how to reduce the gut fermentation from a high carbohydrate throughput and also reduce a lot of the glycemic variability and inflammation that can occur with sugar and fructose and maltodextrin and all these things that endurance athletes consume. So I started using during my Ironman triathlons, high amount of salts, yeah. uh, like magnesium and potassium, et cetera, high amount of amino acids in the form of these essential amino acids a uh, high amount of MCTs, and later when they came to market, ketones, and a very slow or a very low amount of carbohydrates, like a UCAN super starch or, or a dextrose-based fuel that was less fermentable. And so I would consume like one quarter of the amount of carbohydrates that most of my peers were consuming during something like an Ironman, but I would instead use oil in the form of medium chain triglycerides or ketones and then amino acids and electrolytes to fill in the gaps. So I was able to compete at the same level or even faster without eating all the carbohydrates. These things work really well for things like endurance competition also. Yeah, so you mentioned the, the resistance starch. I mean, athletes have been uh, using that. You know, it's, it definitely, definitely works. Do you have the, what products uh, do you have on your, if, matter of fact, let me, let me bring you back to focus for our viewers. What three products, if you're someone who wants to gain muscle, and maybe there's a different set of products for performance. So let, let's talk about what two or three products for those who want to gain muscle, even for health reasons, what would you recommend? The amino I would acid. recommend, so, so let's leave out the stuff people already know about, like a protein and creatine and a yeah. lot of these horses that get kicked to death. I would say the biggest ones would be for growth hormone and growth factor without using expensive hormone replacement injections like ipamorelin or synthetic growth hormone, it would be colostrum, right? Yeah, so, you have a product. I actually took it. I love yep. it. So, I've got a great colostrum at Keon. We get it from uh, Western Washington Farm, organic, grass-fed, grass-finished goat, goats, a uh, super clean product. And that, you know, I've got a lot of athletes that use that to reduce gut permeability during exercise. A lot of people with leaky gut use it to downregulate zonulin and heal the heal the uh, the the gut, uh, and then people use it uh, for this for this growth hormone and growth factor effect. So that would be one would be colostrum. Uh, yeah. What what would stack really well with that are essential aminos in the ratio of about ten to twenty grams per day, and then a final one that falls under the radar, but that I think has a lot of good research behind it is the combo of HMB and ATP. Like if we're not going to talk about SARMs and peptides and a lot of these kind of more advanced injectable strategies, 
Uh, for example, there's a company called Millennium Sports. I do have like a, like a pretty link to the, I, I had them put together this as a stack for me. I think it's bengreenfieldfitness.com slash ATP. Okay. But basically I told them, look, there's all this research. I don't want to necessarily at this point go down the rabbit hole producing this for Keon. So I just send people to their website, but they have HMB with ATP and that dosed pre-workout especially if you're using the amino acids and at some point during the day, preferably on an empty stomach, taking colostrum, you can get a large amount of muscle mass or muscle maintenance without increasing the amount of calories that you consume. So yeah, rather than we know calories. is not good for your health. Yeah. My kids right. product, uh, you turned them on to it. Yeah. Um, the HM. yeah. So, I mean, I'm a fan of creatine. I'm a fan of protein, but amino acids, colostrum, and then an HMB ATP combo in my opinion, that's one of the best stacks that you can use. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's some, uh, great, uh, advice for those who want to put on muscle, no doubt, because you know, there's a, a lot of unhealthy ways, as we mentioned that people get sucked into. Yeah. So I, I yeah. love the little biohacks, uh, little tricks that you're doing. I love the workouts, man. I mean, that's, that's easy for people, you know, mixing up the slow yep. with the, the burst uh, in the week and, and neither take a lot of time. Everybody can do yeah. it. And and I'm, I'm gonna throw in, I'll, I'll throw in one more tip for you. Yeah. Uh, I, I do at the top of the hour, I have, a, I have another interview I'm going to have to get on. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I want to throw in another tip for you. And that would be, I think everybody uh, should own a hex bar. And I have a hex bar. I keep it in the room next to the office. And I'll simply go in there a few times during the day and do a cold lift, meaning that you just have that thing loaded up with as much weight as you can lift for about five reps and you rip that hex bar off the ground and set it down, if you send your body a stimulus throughout the day, a few times during the day that it has to lift something heavy, you can get an incredible amount of muscle maintenance or muscle building, even in the absence of like a formal structured workout. So this would because be- we're, we're set right. up to do that, right? In like our ancestors moving a heavy rock every yeah. now and again, right? But the hex bar allows you to do that to protect the low back, to activate the glutes. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's a perfect addition to the toolbox of anybody who wants to maintain or build muscle. And it's so simple. You just get a hex bar, right. Load it up with weight. You keep that bad boy in the garage or in the basement or wherever it happens to fit. It's got a pretty small footprint. And you just have a rule that three to five times a day, when you step over that thing, you're going to do five reps. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Ben, thanks for the information, man. We love you, dude. You know, it's, uh, we love you on this show. And uh, go to bengreenfieldfitness.com, and uh, you can find those products um, that Ben discussed. So, you write a great blog, man. You write a great article. Uh, people love following you. I think you have the number one fitness blog uh, in the country, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, yeah, I, I try try to write good stuff. The last article that came out this week was uh, sunlight makes you skinny, blue light makes you fat. I think anybody who wants to hack light in their environment needs to go read that article. And I try to put out stuff like that that's helpful and that contains the type of information that a lot of fitness blogs aren't talking about. So, so yeah, uh, Ben is where I got that stuff. And then key on K I O N, uh, Dan can give you guys a link for that is where all yeah. my, my stuff we'll put up, uh, we'll put up those links for, uh, Ben and, and practitioners watching November 2nd through the 4th. I'll put in a video to watch. If you want to know more about that, Ben's going to be on stage a lot because he is running. He's going to be teaching you some of these things and more at the seminar. So how to biohack your hormones, man. I mean, this is key in a fasting state, exercising. So you're going to see that at the seminar practitioner. So watch the video. You'll get it on the link. Thanks, Ben. We'll see you on the next. Awesome. Session. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Later, man. Yep. Well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And practitioners, don't forget to check out Dr. Pompa's event in Las Vegas this November, where Ben Greenfield will be a speaker, along with a lineup of top health experts in this field. Go to hcfevents.com for more information, and you can use promo code CHTV to take $200 off the ticket price. We would love to meet you. We'll be back next week and every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. You may also subscribe to us on iTunes or find us at podcast.drpompa.com. Thanks for listening.